Okay, to get started, I just added a few clips to my timeline that I'd like to export as one video. The quickest way to do this is to go up to File, Quick Export. In the pop-up, make sure you select H.264 to get an MP4 file. The rest of this will use your sequence settings which should be based on the first clip you added to your timeline. So go ahead and click Export, then go to where you want to save it, give it a name, and click Save. It'll take some time to render based on the resolution of your project, its frame rate, and effects that you might have added to the project. Once it's finished, just go to the location where you saved it and double click the file to play it back. Okay, this looks good, but if you want a little more control over the quality, another way to export is by going down here to the Deliver tab. Now, in this side panel, you can give your video a name, and then, if you click the Browse button, you can select the location you'd like to save your exported video to. Next, you'll want to make sure the format set to MP4 and the codec is H.264. Generally, I leave the resolution and frame rate alone since native settings are going to look the best, but you can change these here if you need to. The main thing I want to talk about in here is the quality. If you don't want to fuss around a bunch and just want a great quality video, I'd use the medium or high automatic preset. Best would likely be overkill for a 1080p video, but it might be appropriate if you're working with 4K. Better yet, if you're uploading for YouTube, you can look at this handy chart and figure out what the best frame rate for your video is. Since I'm working with SDR video, that's 24 FPS and 1080p resolution, I should use a Mbps which converts to 8000 kbps. So back in Resolve, we can just check Restrict 2 and set it to 8000 kbps. Okay, that's it for changes, so we can just click Add to Render Queue, which will put it up here, but it won't start the render. To start the render, just click Render All. Once again, it might take some time based on a bunch of different factors, but once this is completed, we can go to where our video is saved at and watch it back. But yeah, that's it for this quick tutorial. I hope you guys found it useful. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.